Decision day is almost here. There's one more regular season game at TQL Stadium. And then the playoffs begin in full force at the Fortress. And the orange and blue have home field advantage all the way through the MLS Cup Final. Buckle up everybody, it's crunch time on Central Parkway. Cincinnati, here we go. Good evening and welcome to FC Cincinnati Weekly alongside Kevin McCloskey. I'm your host, Marshall Kramsky. Kevin, in a season full of pleasant surprises, there was another one last week. Big news for FC Cincinnati fans. Chris Albright has signed a long-term contract extension with the club. This has to be great news for FC Cincinnati, Kevin. It's fantastic. I, I think we talked about it last week. I, myself and Tommy talked about it. Just to have kind of, you know, the security of him in place. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is, as far as the vision, it's come to fruition. He's had a plan. He's executed the plan. And, and as this team obviously has had success this season, you know, the, the fans, the club, it's just the taste, right? They want more of that that success. And, and so to, to sign Chris and all like a, a long-term contract, it seems like as well, I think bodes great. I think for the franchise itself, I think it's fantastic. I think he's really just started to do his work as well. Yeah. So it's a, but the combination of himself and Pat essentially has, has brought the short-term success, long-term success. I think once his recruitment plan kind of is fully vetted and goes through. Um, that's exciting and, and a lot of success hopefully for the future. I mean, you mentioned some of these recruits. He drafted Roman Salantano. He signed Matt Miaz, go to Wobodo, brings over Bupenza this year. Extensions to Acosta, Barrial, Vasquez. He's bringing in not just names, he's bringing in big names. And listen, that, that wasn't easy either, right? He right. had to change a lot, right? There, there was a lot of transactions, a lot of transitions uh, in a short period of time too. So to do the business that he's done in the short term is exciting. But for me, long term, especially with the vision that he has in the plan, it's it's going to be exciting to see. It is exciting. And his resume, as we said, it speaks for itself. He served as technical director for the Philadelphia Union from 2014 to 2020, during which time the Union won the Supporters' Shield in 2020 and made the final of the U.S. Open Cup three times. He also was a very successful player in MLS, playing 15 seasons. He was selected to the All-Star team three times and the MLS Best 11 in 2005. And if that wasn't enough, then this week, Chris went out and signed his head coach, Pat Noonan, to a long-term contract extension. Noonan has the second best record after two seasons in the history of MLS, both ending with playoff appearances. He won the Supporters' Shield in his second season as head coach. He also took the club to the semifinals of the U.S. Open Cup. So the top brass at the club and the top player, Lucho Acosta, are all signed, sealed, and staying put. So things are going great, and they're only getting better. The future so bright. If you're an FC Cincinnati fan, you gotta wear shades. Kevin, he's kind of done it all. Well, he's a winner, right? Yeah. I mean, as is Pat Noonan too. I mean, Chris is the same thing. Chris comes from great pedigree, great stock, and, and he's a guy again that, that's backed up. He's not a guy that goes out and makes these promises and can't mm -hmm. live by them. He, he is, he's done it by his actions. And, and again, he's respected by the technical staff. He's got a great team in place too, not just him, the, the scouts, the, the people that advise him as well. And, and, and again, for, for FC Cincinnati, for these fans, it's an exciting time. The epitome of actions louder than worlds. Okay, words, rather. Moving on to the club on the field, with the playoffs set, at least as far as FC Cincinnati is concerned, having secured the number one seed. We wanted to take a look at some year-end awards, starting with goal of the year. FCC has two goals that would be candidates. Here's a look at the two masterpieces. When you come back. All right. But when you can hit something as splendid and as true as this, why waste your efforts on the minuscule when the grandeur await? Other words for Badeau. Cincinnati holds its ground and now Wobodeau with the release. Acosta beats one man one on one and another. This is still Lucho Acosta continuing on. Acosta. The goal of the season as well. It's just unbelievable. First of all, he uses skill and strength. Then he uses pace. And then he uses patience just to get the time right to take the strike. Two goals that speak for themselves. Yeah. Two amazing <laughs> goals. But let's talk about them a little bit more, Kevin. Fortunately for FC Cincinnati fans, both took place 
at TQL Stadium. Let's go chronologically. Alvaro Barrios, that was first back in June against the Pittsburgh River Hounds of the USL and the US Open Cup. And it was just a shocker of a goal. Was it love? It was Brandon Vasquez's reaction right here. That's it was just so much fun when that went in. Yeah, listen, it's it's all about technique, right? The technique of the corner kick, first of all, for Lucho to find the space. And look, Marshall, I've, I've seen this probably five, six times in training. They, they try this a lot, right? Yeah. So it's not just random. But again, to do it in that, that obviously, USL game at the time, USL uh, Open Cup game, and, and to also then to be able to execute it under pressure, uh, I think speaks volumes just to, to the, the technical level, mm -hmm. the focus, the concentration. What a sweet strike, too. Awesome execution. The place on yeah. the foot, amazing. Then we go from June to the U.S. Open Cup to September in the regular season MLS play, and Lucho Acosta showed just about his whole arsenal against Charlotte. I think everyone who was at the Fortress that night is not going to forget this one, but I know three people who remember it in a different way. The three guys who Lucho just left in his wake on Charlotte FC. Yeah, plus the goalkeeper, right? Yes, but, I mean, support. again, just the balance here, the, the, the vision. This guy is so skillful, Marshall. It's just incredible. And then, again, just to have the awareness where the goalkeeper was and to execute that finish just off balance was uh, superb. One of the best goals, I think, in this league, never mind this season. Uh, incredible. How about the timing right after he signs the contract yeah. extension is when that goal was scored. Yeah. Showing, hey, yeah, I'm worth it. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and sometimes, as you know, it, it's been talked about when there's big signings, mm -hmm. right? big contract extensions, things like that. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in different uh, organizations. And, and I'm kind of joking a little bit. But with Lloyd's show, again, it was, it, it was, a, it was a, an important night at TQL Stadium. But what a way to cap off that, that extension. And he did not let the fans down. That's Something awesome. special. Congrats to Lucho. Okay, so Kevin, these two goals, they won't be in competition with each other for the MLS goal of the year because Alvaro's was in U.S. Open Cup play. So what do you think? Which one was the goal of the year it, for the club? It's, it's tough. It's tough. I think, listen, Acosta's goal, um, I think, it is the best goal. When you, when you think about all of kind of the factors and the variables that kind of come into it, the skill set, he takes the ball to halfway line, he beats three or four players and he scores in the top corner. Uh, that, to me, is, is, it just uh, typifies kind of what he has as far as the skills at the arsenal, uh, as quoted. Um, but, you know, it's tough because Barry Al's goal was just such a, again, technical goal. Mm -hmm. The timing was right, and it was an incredible goal, but I think Acosta, for me, it just kind of inches out. I think that has to be the top goal. It's fair to say Acosta. What about pretty... yourself? I just love the celebration on yeah. Barrial's goal yeah. so much. Lucho's goal to me, I think I agree with you, was better, but I think it was so much fun and that the timing of it, right? Yeah. And my favorite forgotten stat is Wobodo actually gets an assist yeah. on that play, which is great. But I agree with you. But I will give the celebration on Barrial's goal. That's All right. Fair. Remember, fans, get to vote for the MLS Goal of the Year. That voting will begin on Monday, October 30th. And don't forget, you can vote for your favorite FCC player for other MLS year-end awards like League MVP, Goalie of the Year, Defender of the Year. You can even vote for Coach of the Year. More awards as well. And the fan vote counts for one-third of the vote, and the other two-thirds being journalists and club technical staff. So don't miss out. Fan voting for those awards ends on Monday. Just go to MLSsoccer.com to vote for your favorite FCC players and Coach Noonan today. There is one more regular season game to be played, and it's tomorrow at the Fortress. Last week, Tommy G sat in that chair, Kevin, and said Pat Noonan said that he wanted to win these year-end games after they clinched the number one seed and the supporters' shield. Let's take a look at our match preview brought to you by Tri-State GMC Buick. Atlanta United FC comes into TQL Stadium, and they've only lost once since FC beat them at Atlanta at the end of August. Here's some of the highlights from that game right here, Kevin. Yeah, I think, listen, Atlanta is a tough team to play against, mm -hmm. right? For, for Cincinnati, and obviously based on geography, a close game, it's always got that kind of rival feel. Sure. Uh, I think for Atlanta, they're in the playoffs, they've clinched, so not as much to, to play for for both teams, maybe kind of positioning, but I, I, for Atlanta at least. But for FC Cincinnati, again, it's that winning mentality. I think it's very important, Marshall, to, to continue. This is the last game before the playoffs. And, and so I, I think uh, for Pat and for his staff and for this team, they want to be on, you know, firing on a few uh, full cylinders. They've got to get into that groove. They, they've got to have that, that winning mentality back. And again, just another big boost 
at TQL Stadium to get prepared for that playoff game next week. And it's fun. We talked about some of Lucho's other goals. How about that one? I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> he's unbelievable. It's fun to watch. Glad he's in Cincinnati. Yeah. FC Cincinnati fell behind early in the contest, but Lucho and Brandon came through in the final 15 minutes with two goals, and this win clinched the playoff spot way back in August for the Orange and Blue. You can listen to Kevin and his partner, Tom Gallarder, on the radio on ESPN 1530 doing all the games or on iHeartRadio. Don't forget, when you watch the Orange and Blue on Apple Season Pass, you can get the home team audio and you'll hear Kevin and Tommy G doing their thing. So get into your settings, check them out tomorrow night. Kevin, thanks as always. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Always. All right. Kevin's going to get out of here. But when we come back, we're going to go behind the curtain our the radio dial make that and see what it's like to be in the booth at the fortress with the boys don't go away fc cincinnati weekly we'll be right back nobody really close to him either bellarian looks to deliver flick towards the far post and it's off the line what a save for roman salatano what a massive moment. Welcome back to FC Cincinnati Weekly. Kevin McCloskey and Tom Galater have been doing the FC Cincinnati game since the club was formed, starting in the USL and now in the MLS. There have been ups, there have been downs for the team, but their professional and personal relationship has grown over the years, and this season has been a blast to be a part of. A shot and a goal! Lucho Acosta at the edge of the 18! This the is the greatest the job in the world. You get to talk sports, you get a great seat, you get a meal out of it, you get to sit here and talk about the game for a couple hours. And some nights that's good and some nights that's bad. Fortunately this year it's more good nights than bad nights. This is the second time we've seen Schulte take too long on the ball. Back for Vasquez, back across, Cuba's first touch, and it's it! This all but I think for a soccer enthusiast it is, uh, it's almost like a dream, right? It's awesome. I, I think for me, again, I played the game, right? And I've coached the game too, so it's still the closest thing to kind of being on that field and, and being kind of connected to the game. Um, it, it's awesome. With Tommy too, it makes it extra special. I think we, we have good chemistry. Um, there's a bit of banter, there's a bit of joking, but then there's, you know, kind of, we're very intense about it too, right? We, we take uh, our job seriously. So the, the descriptions and, and kind of adding the professionalism is there, but at the same time, too, we can take a step back and laugh. I'll tease him, he teases me, and, and it works. So it's been fun. The first time we came on the air together, that was Kevin's first ever broadcast. And look, I, I had done other broadcasting, but that was Kevin's first night on the air. And he became more comfortable, and then we become more comfortable, and he knows when I'm going to kind of back off and give him some time to talk and then he knows when I need to get back in. Sometimes, you know, when, when a, a big play happens or a goal goes in, I have to shut up, first and foremost, to let Tommy describe the call. Then I have to have the composure to, to obviously then, you know, be able to, to fill in the blanks, you know, what happened, why did it happen, and, and what was so kind of special about the play. Into the 18, takes a shot, and Alvin Powell nearly tied the match. Going to the far post, he had some options, decided to take the shot. He didn't miss by much. First shot for FC Cincinnati and Alvis Powell again, a fullback. We know that he's got pace, he's got great balance, he weaves in and out. That kind of chemistry only comes with time and with doing games together. And Kevin and I now together for eight years have done over 200 games together. Countdown to kickoff rolls on at TQL Stadium on what will no doubt be a special night. The supporter shield will be presented to the Orange and Blue after the match against New York. So we will carry that live on the post game show. Make sure you stay tuned for that. It's just the start. It's the start, the first trophy. Such a great trophy. I think it's significant too. Of course, there's a lot of weight in this country with the MLS Cup, but for me, the supporter issue and being consistent throughout the season and proving week in, week out that you're the best team in both conferences, that's like the rest of the world, right? Every other domestic league across the world, you get rewarded essentially for winning the, the championship at the end of the year based on league performance. And that for, for tonight and for the fans, I, I think that's going to be special. The club made a big announcement recently. Season ticket memberships for next season sold out. You can secure your priority access to future season tickets availability by joining the Orange and Blue 
reserve. This guarantees your spot in line for season tickets when they become available and also provides additional benefits like a subscription to MLS season pass. Discounts at the team store and complimentary tickets. FC Cincinnati two matches at TQL Stadium. Go to FCCincinnati.com for more details. Coming up next on FC Cincinnati Weekly, we all know Alec Kahn as a goalkeeper for the Orange and Blue. But to some local kids, he's just that soccer guy who comes and plays with them on Thursdays. We'll give you a closer look after the break. Welcome back to FC Cincinnati Weekly. When professional athletes come to a town to play their sport, sometimes it's a tough transition. A new city, a new job with a new team. It's a lot for a young adult to deal with. But goalkeeper Alec Kahn has embraced his new city, his new community, and he has met some great kids in the process. Finds a rebound on the first one, we're off to the races, pal. Loving life. We good? Here we go, it's on you, Bobby. We, we are very fortunate with what we do in terms of our schedule and, you know, the, the way that we're treated and um, compensated. And it's the least that I can do to, you know, give back. And for me, it makes me feel like Cincinnati is more of a home, um, trying to, you know, be out in this community a bit more than I was last year and um, make this feel like my community. making that connection. It was actually through um, Zach Steffen, his nonprofit it's called Parachute, and they kind of take it on to um, get players connected with different nonprofits in their community. And they have a relationship with the Boys and Girls Club of Ohio from when he played in Columbus. Um, so through one of their reps, I was able to connect with the Sheikley Club, and it's been awesome. Is there anyone in the gym yet, KJ? Oh, Sage is in there. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Sage. Hello. How's it going? How are you? Are we going to kick today? You been practicing? Yeah? Got to keep your head on a swivel in here. Oh. We're my team. Go, Destiny. My favorite part is when you interact with us. It treats us like right people, even though he played for us. Like a good soccer team. My favorite part is like, like when we, um, like when we get in the jail and stuff, and play like play dodgeball and stuff. And that's my favorite part. The kids look forward to it. They know on Thursdays he's coming, and I love it because he's very down to earth, very chill. Like he, he didn't even tell people he played for FC. Like we didn't even tell the kids. He just literally came in, wanted to know all the kids' names. By the second or third week, he knew all the kids' names. They were looking for them to come. He's just super humble and just a cool guy. He also taught me how to be a good goalie, be a kicker. I love him being here. It means a lot to me. It gives me a lot of energy to be in this setting, um, whether I'm you know, helping with homework or drawing or doing yoga, which is the first time I've done that here, playing basketball or soccer. It's always something new. The kids keep you on their toes. and. Um, it's a really special place, and I'm happy to be a part of what they're doing in this community. If you don't have an official FC Cincinnati kit to wear to the playoffs, you're in luck. Check out the new FC Cincinnati team store in the heart of OTR. The new store located at 1433 Vine Street, and it will now serve as the team's primary team store on non-match days. Parking, it's easily accessible in the lot right across the street. Come check out the newest FC Cincinnati merchandise at our new home in OTR. For hours and more details, go to FCCincinnati.com. FC Cincinnati Weekly, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to FC Cincinnati Weekly. Tomorrow night's game, it's a sellout. But there will be more soccer at the Fortress this season. After the wild card games next week, we'll know who FCC will face in the first round of the playoffs. That'll be a three-game series. Monday at 10 a.m., people on the season ticket wait list and with non-converted deposits will be allowed to purchase tickets to the first game of the three-game series. Then at 1 p.m., whatever is left, it's going to go on sale to the general public. Don't miss the first MLS playoff soccer in TQL Stadium. Go to FCCincinnati.com for tickets Monday. That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Join us here every Friday at 730 for FC Cincinnati Weekly, the most comprehensive coverage of the orange and blue you'll find anywhere. For Kevin McCloskey and the rest of our FC Cincinnati Weekly crew, have a great evening and go FCC.